How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the undisclosed location, which is definitely not my kitchen. Recently I've been doing some firecracker testing and I've had some pretty good success with it, but I've been wanting to try out some TPA Flash. And now before I get into discussing what TPA Flash is or any of the nitty gritty with this video, I gotta make the lawyers happy. Please do not try to replicate anything you see in this video at home or anywhere else for that matter. Flash powder is inherently dangerous whether you're working with traditional flash or TPA flash and all necessary precautions need to be taken in order to ensure your safety. And one of those necessary precautions is to never work with flash powder. Because guys, I can't stress this enough. If you don't know what you're doing, if you're just coming upon this video because you think you might want to make some M80s for the 4th of July, don't. It's not worth losing your fingers or even worse. It's not worth getting hurt over. Go to your local reputable fireworks stand and buy the product that they have readily available. I promise you, you won't regret it. And now that we hopefully made the lawyers happy, what is TPA? TPA stands for tetraphilic acid or something close to that. I'll put it here in the video. And according to what I'll describe as some reputable fireworks literature, it was originally added to flash powder by the U.S. military in an attempt to make a less sensitive flash powder to stuff like handling, shock, friction, all the stuff that flash powder is known for in the negative sense. And now if this is true, if TPA added to traditional flash powder makes it less sensitive but still works in salutes, why would people still be using traditional flash powder? Well, first is cost and ease of procurement of the precursors. But the other part of it is the traditional wisdom is TPA doesn't work well in smaller amounts and smaller containers. And that's the whole point of this test here, ladies and gentlemen. I want to see how low you can go with TPA. Now, I'm going to discuss the construction of these guys in front of me. But before I do, I have to make the lawyers happy once again. I am not going to be discussing the chemicals to make TPA flash. I'm not going to be discussing the ratios that those chemicals are used in. I'm not going to be discussing where you can find the chemicals to make TPA flash. All of that is readily available and easily found if you just ask whatever search engine you would like to use. I am also not going to be giving you a step one, step two, step three hand holding lesson on how to make these. I will, like I say, go over the construction, but I am not going to give you baby's first M80 instructions. All right, so let's get into it. We have six loads of TPA flash with the smallest one being 1.4 grams and the largest being 20 grams. We have 1.4, 3, 5, 10, 15, and 20. Now for the smaller ones, we're using a traditional M80 tube. The plugs are set back just like less than a 16th of an inch from the lip of the outer hole. And then the ends are filled with pine pitch. We'll discuss why pine pitch here in a second. Now for the larger loads, the 5, 10, the 15, the 20, we're using some quarter stick tubes. The reason for that is pretty obvious in the first sense. You can't fit 20 grams of powder inside an M80 tube. But the second reason is because, again, the traditional wisdom is that TPA doesn't work in smaller quantities. And what it'll do is just blow the end caps off, similar to what you'll see in this video using an M80 tube and 3 grams of 3F black powder. And that's all well and good, but how are these quarter stick tubes going to, in theory, help prevent those plugs from popping out? Well, the lighter the charge, and in this case, the 5 gram load, the deeper the plugs are set in. And for this 5 gram, I have the plug set in nearly a full inch, at least 3 quarters of an inch down, and then I filled both ends with pine pitch, pine resin. The idea behind that is instead of having the plugs right there at the very end where they can easily pop out, you have that whole section that's filled with glue sticking to the outside of that that case, that hole, where in theory, the path of least resistance is just gonna be splitting the hole and giving us a nice crack. We'll see if that happens, that's the theory. And then as the loads work up, the 10 gram load is a little bit closer to the lip, but again, filled with pine pitch. And once we get to the 15 gram load, we have the fuse coming out the top because the plugs are close enough 
where I'm not too worried that the pitch is gonna affect the fuse. Even though I am using American Visco fuse, I do not know if this is waterproof or not. It does seem lacquer coated, so it wouldn't surprise me if it's waterproof, but since it doesn't say for sure on the packaging, I don't wanna risk it. I don't wanna have you know, a full inch of pine pitch potentially messing up this fuse. So instead for the lighter loads, we have the fuse coming out the sides. And on the topic of fuse, always test your fuse. Never buy the little off-cut pieces that are just a couple inches long of all the various types of fuses that are labeled, you know, 30 seconds a foot or whatever, because there's a potential that there is a quicker fuse mixed in there somewhere and you can't test the burn rate of each individual piece. So instead, always buy full rolls of fuse, just, you know, the 10, 20 foot rolls, and then test a good six inch portion for the burn rate. See how long it takes to burn. Obviously I'm using some much longer fuses with these. And the reason for that is I wanna be able to get back to the same spot every time so that we can hopefully get a good comparison between the noise level. I don't have a decibel meter, so I just have to use my ears, but hopefully getting to the same exact location will allow me to gauge that sound good enough. And now we've talked about the TPA crackers over here, but what are these three crackers over here? These three are filled with 3F black powder from Goex. Not 3FA pyrotechnics powder, 3FG sporting powder, gun powder, muzzle loading powder. Why am I including this in a test of TPA flash? Well, as shown earlier in the video, black powder doesn't work very well inside of crackers. It just blows the end caps off, similar to what the traditional wisdom is with TPA in smaller quantities. You might see where I'm going with this. What I wanted to do is give a comparison between black powder, which is arguably the most basic fireworks chemical or chemical composition that you could either make or get your hands on. Like I say, you could just buy this stuff readily made from a lot of sporting goods stores, or alternatively, I literally have this on my table because I was doing some shooting, Pyrodex. This is the alternative to black powder. It's basically a one-to-one -one comparison, different chemicals and stuff, but in terms of like using it in a gun and potentially a cracker, it's basically the same thing. Now again, these have 3FG black powder from Goex. We have a 15 gram, a 10 gram, and a five gram. Why no 20 gram for a direct comparison with these guys? I couldn't fit 20 grams inside of this case and fill it, the end caps, with glue. That's very important here because once again, what we're trying to do is throw everything in the favor of these crackers, whether it be TPA, or in this case, black powder. I wanna see if there's any scenario, any circumstance where you can make these into decent enough crackers that could potentially either be better or at least comparable with TPA flash. Because if you don't have to go through the process of making TPA to make your crackers and you're just satisfied with what black powder can give you, then you may just want to go with black powder because it is so readily available. And I forgot to mention, why am I using pine pitch instead of something like hot glue? Well, there's a couple reasons. Number one, it's free to me. I own a forest, I live in the woods, I can go pick pine pitch off of trees, that was a lot of peas, and render it down, or I guess sift out all the twigs and stuff. I don't know if you would call that rendering or not, but I can clarify it. And then all I need to do is put it inside either my oven or my toaster oven, let it all melt, and then I can take it out and fill these end caps very easily. It's also biodegradable. Guys, I hate the trend in fireworks where we are just adding more plastic to our components instead of removing plastic from our components. I feel like we should be trying to make our fireworks less harmful for the environment because they're already not great for the environment as is. So if I can eliminate some non-biodegradable made out of plastics or rubbers or whatever, you know, hot glue, there is no biodegradable hot glue. I tried finding it this is the biodegradable hot glue. The other side of it is because it's not a hot glue or 
doesn't use a hot glue gun, I should say, you don't have to use a hot glue gun. So that's another cost that I didn't have to buy specifically for this project, but I also don't have to worry about that hot glue gun either getting too hot at the tip, which I know is not that much of a concern, or what's more of a concern, forgetting to unplug the hot glue gun when you're making that glue pass, having it short, igniting the powder, kaboom, right there in your face. I've eliminated all of that risk because there is no electricity when you're just holding a mason jar full of melted pine pitch. Now I will say that while it does work as good or better than hot glue for the raw inner portion of the cardboard tubes, it does not work very well on the outer portion with the glossy covers. I had to work pretty hard to get these fuses coming out the sides to be glued down with the pine pitch. I was able to do so, but really, I would not recommend having the fuse coming out the side. I don't like the way that looks first off, and then it's also a pain to use the pine pitch for. I will also say, I am not recommending that you use pine pitch on your firecrackers. Pine pitch does have its drawbacks. Number one, if you don't own a forest or live in the woods, it's probably not free for you. It's probably more expensive to acquire than traditional hot glue, which would totally throw away the free portion of it. The other negative side of it is, it is basically rock hard. The flip side to it is, once this explodes, this almost certainly will not stay as a solid plug. It will pretty much guaranteed to shatter with the explosion. And while that's not necessarily totally safe, it's definitely safer than just having the entire plug shoot out which is common with hot glue plugs. So kind of tit for tat. I'm just choosing to use this again because it's free, because it's biodegradable, and because at least for these inner portions, it works as good, if not better than hot glue. So with all that out of the way, we're gonna head out to the range and we're gonna start testing these guys out. We're gonna obviously work from the smallest to largest and we are gonna be intermixing the black powder. So we're gonna start out with the 1.4 gram M80 case, then the three gram M80 case, both of those are TPA. Then before we go to the five gram TPA, we're gonna try the five gram 3FG black powder charge. Then we'll move to the five gram TPA, 10 gram black powder, 10 gram TPA, so on and so forth until we get to the final 20 gram. Camera's roughly at 10 yards. We're starting out with the Navy SEAL cracker. All right, now we're moving on to 1.4 grams of TPA flash. I'd say it worked. <laughs> Let's try three grams. First off, I gotta show you guys. Here's one of the end plugs, the bottom end plug. You can see what I was talking about where that pine pitch is just gonna shatter once it explodes, but it should hold long enough for the explosion to take place. Very cool. Three grams, PPA. I'm liking TPA, man. All right, five grams of 3FG black powder. Now, it definitely wasn't as loud as the three grams of TPA, but it was very close. Now, of course, five grams of black powder that you're gonna buy from the store is gonna cost you more than three grams of TPA flash, 
but nevertheless, that was pretty good. Now we're going up to five grams of TPA. And once again, I gotta show this off. Here's one of the end plugs. That's the bottom end plug. Held on perfect, just enough for it to explode. <laughs> that, was, that was pretty loud. <laughs> 10 grams, 3FD. Again. Pine pitch plug, working just as intended. So here's the interesting thing. I hope it came across on camera. That one was not nearly as loud as the five grams of black powder. And I think the reason why is that one blew the end plugs, whereas the five gram had enough time to blow up before the end plugs blew. I'm gonna go check out the hole, see if I can bring it over. So the bottom end plug, you can see that it's mainly still intact, but once again, you're seeing that shattering that I talked about, but then it just blew that end. No shattering to the tube whatsoever. Now we're moving on to 10 grams of TPA. Holy cow. <laughs> that left the ears ringing a little bit. 15 grams, three up. I don't think this one's gonna work. I mean, that was even quieter than the 10 gram by a major margin. Once again, same story. I mean, this end plug, unlike the other one, this one is, I mean, a little bit cracked on the edge, but for the most part, it was just able to blow that top off no problem. I don't think it's gonna blow the top off this one. 15 grams, PPA. Holy hell. Yeah, we might get the cops called on us. 20 grams TPA. That was insane. TPA Flash is Habeas J approved. Hope you all enjoyed. If you did, please leave it a like, comment down below if you have any comments or questions. I will do my best to answer them within the limits that I've set for myself. If you learned something, like I say, leave it a like, comment, share this video with another pyro, someone you think also might enjoy, and subscribe if you haven't done so already because I got a lot more fun videos in the future. Thank you for watching, think for yourself, shoot straight, and I'll see you next time. And here's the top of the barrel for those wondering. This was flat when we started and now there's a hole punched through it. <laughs>